Hey folks. So today I thought we could have a look at sand dune formation. I'll just take that sheet off, it's not very clean. Okay, um, so we'll just pop that as our title. Now it's not a huge part of the spec, so um, you know you're not you're not likely to get a nine marker on this one. However, it's one that could come up, and every mark counts. Now remember, your case study is a nice local one. It's East Head Spit, which is down at Witterings. Okay, East Head Spit is a lovely place to go for the day. Go for a walk. There's lots and lots of um, sand dunes, and you can you know you can run around there. It's it's a beautiful place in the summer. It can get quite busy, um, but it's our best example of sand dunes. Unless you want to um, get down to Cornwall or Devon, and you can see some incredible ones. I think Saunton Sands um, in North Devon is one of the best in the UK. Sand dunes just go on for miles, and they're they're a really great example. Um, now, to, to teach you about this, I'm just going to do a really simple sketch, and if you just kind of copy it, that would be great. So we're going to just start with our um, sort of hillside here, and then we need our old dune, and then a four dune, and then like an embryo dune, and then the beach. Okay. So it's just a collection of bumps, basically, at the moment. Um, but if we just chuck a couple of trees on this one, it reminds us that this is not a gene, okay? Um, and then we'll start labelling them. So it's probably easiest, actually, if I, if I just put the C over here, okay? And then if you imagine that, you know, this is the beach, this little hump here, this is our, what we call an embryo gene. Obviously embryo is the word we use to describe a baby um, when it's in its early stages of development. And it's very much the same for how a sand dune is formed. You know, they start very small. Um, and then where are we? We're gonna have our kind of high tide mark that means the very highest tide will come up to here, okay? We've got our C over there. Then this one here, this is our four gene. This is a bit like you guys, sort of a teenage gene, if you like. It's um, been around a little while. It's sprouting <laughs> hair. Um, this isn't hair. This is something called marum grass. It's really clever type of grass that manages to live in sand. Um, it's amazing stuff. Its roots basically, it's kind of longer than that. Um, its roots kind of hold the sand together. So the embryo dune wouldn't have any of that. You'd, it would literally just be sand that would be forming a sort of dune shape. Um, but the, the four dune would have marum grass on it. And then further back, We've got what we call our yellow gene. Okay, and then eventually back here we might have a grey gene. And then in this gap here, this is a, called a dune slack. It's basically a pond. I'll put the word pond in. Just you can have those sometimes form. So there you've got the stages. Now I'm gonna draw an arrow going backwards because they don't form forwards towards the sea they, they do actually form backwards so this would be the start and this is the finish okay now there are four stages that you would need to mention okay you wouldn't be expected to draw this and you'd likely be given a photograph or something to help you but we'll we'll go through the four stages together so I'm going to, actually going to draw it backwards. So embryo dune is stage one. The marum grass section and the four dune is stage two. And stage three mm, is kind of, where are we? It's actually kind of over here. Stage three and then stage 
four is over here. So let's label those up. So number one, that is embryo genes. They form around obstacles. So they can't exactly form on their own. They need small rocks. So perhaps I'll just draw a rock there. Um, they need rocks in order to build up the sand. They need to catch on something. It can even be seaweed, uh, logs, that kind of thing, some wood on the beach. But they need to form around obstacles. Uh, E.g. rocks. Number two is here, isn't it? It's our four genes. It's actually a proper gene. So we can put their genes develop. And remember, they would just get blown away if they didn't have this marum grass. So we need to put that in there. We need to say genes develop and are stabilized. That's a key word. By marum grass. Now, if you forgot the name of the grass in the exam, that wouldn't be the end of the world, but do remember to talk about these grasses. Okay. Um, now, number three, I sort of popped it over here, but basically the other genes have got grasses on as well. And as we know, grasses decompose. They don't last forever. Okay, they can die out. And what happens is, as they decompose, they make the sand more fertile, which can then increase the range of plants that you can see in it. So number three, we want the word decomposing vegetation. These are your geographical words. These are the kind of words we want you to use in the exam, especially if you get one of those spag questions. But yeah, decomposing vegetation makes the sand more fertile, which in turn, another arrow, increases the range of plants. So you see not just marron grass on these further back genes, you know, you'll see sort of flowering plants, grasses, just different kinds of succulents and vegetation. And then finally, stage four, just before it becomes a grey dune. A grey dune is really on its way out. There's no, nothing much living on it. You know, it hasn't got that good quality vegetation um, and it's not being fed by the sand that's coming off the sea. So it's really kind of in its old age there. But number four is this pond, this dune slack, as we call it, and how it can form in depressions. So rainfall, um, things like that can, can fill up and they can actually make what we call ponds or dune slacks. So let's put that in there. Dune slacks. A depression is just, um, in this sense, it's just a, a dip. Okay, and if you can't remember dune slacks, just remember ponds, okay? They wouldn't ever happen this end of the formation. But as I said, in Saunton, this can go half a mile before you get to this stage. Whereas in East Head, it might only be, I don't know, 10, 20, 30 meters. So it really does depend on the place that you're in. So I hope that helps you with sand dune formation.